Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and welcome to the Deep Junk Garage Race Car Challenge. I had a GTO picked out and all set aside, and at the very last minute, like literally the last minute, um, this kind of struck me, and I decided to go with the Monte Carlo Super Sport. As always, if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe, like, and ring the bell to get notified of all future videos. So this challenge was fairly simple. Um, do a race car, something that you would have for your shop if you owned a shop. And it could be anything, it could be dirt track, it could be drag strip, it could be circle track, it doesn't matter, whatever it may be, it could be off-road, but something that you would use to represent your shop. So um, you guys know me, I'm, I'm more of a muscle car, street rod, custom type of person. And something about the Monte Carlo, um, I actually had one, uh, actually looked just like this, no T-tops, back in the day, and I don't know, the car was kind of sitting around, it's something I've been wanting to tackle, and I needed a good reason to do so, and I figured this was a perfect opportunity, and it's probably something a little different that the other guys wouldn't do. And I had some racing slicks with the raised white lettered for the back, and some pie cutters for the front, so I figured it was going to be perfect, and... The only issue, as usual, is the length of the, the wheels or the axles that happen to be on the donor wheels are not quite the right size. So uh, the backs were good, but the fronts were too too short. So um, I'm using my 1 16th k &S brass tubing, and I mark it out. I cut it with my whiz wheel that's attached to my Dremel tool. I clean up the edges and I do so without cutting my fingers off, which if you're a child watching this and you shouldn't be, but if you are, don't do that. So I clean out the holes, make sure everything's good that I can get my, my axles through. And I have a spare piece of uh, piano wire that's actual size for an axle. I put that in there and I'll use that to clean out anything that might get stuck inside. And it's pretty helpful. So um, it's always good to have a spare piece kicking around. And then I cut my axle in half, and that works perfectly to space out the wheels. Um, I know that the axles, the original axle is too short to begin with, so them touching when I put them in is not going to be an issue. Um, so sometimes you have to trim them up a little bit if you're actually shortening it. Um, this was not the issue or the case in this time. So it worked out really well. The... The die cast body itself had a post sticking down. You can see me, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of putting a little notch, like I'm cutting a tree down on all four sides because you really, I don't have anything to get in there. So that was the easiest way to do that. And I decided I'm going to, I got this scoop from Blue Mini TSI Customs. I actually got a bunch of parts from him and I almost had a full blown motor, but I like the cowl induction hood. So I decided to go with the scoop. So I'm going to cut a hole for that. And then I'm going to notch out while I'm doing other things. I always bounce around a lot, and I show you pretty much the order that I do things, so there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. Um, but I decided to um, to get the, the whole axle to sit lower because I'm using the axle tube. I'm notching out the, the chassis. And you can see here with the hole cut in, I've got the – trying to get that – scoop to sit perfectly was a little bit of a challenge what i ended up doing is making a spacer that goes on the glass because obviously the engine has a certain degree of rake to it when it's sitting in a chassis and it just looked funny otherwise so i had to kind of prop it up a little bit but after cleaning the body i'm pretty much just going to uh, put my screws back in wipe it down with my mineral spirits i'll wipe it down with some degreaser and pretty much ready for paint and I kind of hemmed and hawed on the color on this because I want to be able to put decals on it. But yet, at the same time, uh, just keeping it a light color really seems stupid because it's a race car. So um, I kind of went back and forth on what color I was going to paint it, how I was going to paint it. Um, a pattern. Here I'm using a degreaser. Um, you know, so painting for me, I like. But it's also, it's one of those things that's very permanent. <laughs> I mean, granted, you can restrip it, but I put a lot, probably more thought than I should into how I'm going to paint things and what I'm going to paint and what color and all that crap. So um, it was one of those things that was a little bit of a challenge. So the 
base I'm going with, or the chassis, I'm going to go with my Chaos Black, which I use on just about everything. And it's got a nice semi-gloss look to it. It's perfect for chassis and certain parts that, you know, um, I, you, I, shit, I use it on everything. So, uh, it's just, it's a really nice, and it acts as a primer. So, I find it very helpful and time-saving at the same time. So, I do have Stino Res, but I've also got these cans of um, Tamiya Fine Primer. So, that's what I'm doing right there. It was gray. And then I'm using uh, a Cortez Silver from Splash Paints, which comes right out of the bottle and right into your gun. There's no mixing anything in it. It works out perfectly. Um, it's a base coat, clear coat system, so you obviously you'll have to clear it afterwards, but I clear anyway, so it works out really well. Um, I've never had an issue with this stuff running. Put a couple light coats on, and you can put it on as almost as, well, not, I'd say as heavy as you want, but, you know, within reason. But I'm going to do the whole car in silver, and I'm going to put, I believe I put three coats on it, just to make sure I had it all right. Here's the, the next coat. So you can see I go a little bit heavier each time and a little bit more, a little bit more precise just to make sure I get full coverage. And I made the mistake, and it's not really a mistake, but I primed it gray. So when I painted silver, I'm just really taking my time, make sure I got everything that I needed to get. Because it's easy to miss, you know, and the last thing you want to do is have to go back and do it again. So, so that's painted silver. Obviously, it's flat because it's a base coat, clear coat system. And then I've got a, a wide assortment of Tamiya masking tape and pinstriping. I call it pinstriping tape, but it's masking tape as well, but it's like a vinyl. Very flexible, very easy to use. Um, that stuff is amazing. So I decided to go with another splash paints. And yes, I have a ton of splash paints. Um, and no, they're not sponsoring anything. <laughs> it's a midnight blue. And I've got three or four shades of blue from them. Um, I wanted to go with something a little bit darker because I was hoping for a, a decent contrast from the silver. And pretty much the same thing. Um, I know it looks like I'm going fast, but I do have this sped up. And I always speed most of my videos up anyways. So I always put a light coat, just like on the silver. The blue... Uh, how do I put this? When you first start painting it, it seems like it's not going on strong enough. Don't worry about it. So, my Wicked Pisser Jaw. You guys know, if you've been following me, when I hit 14,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away all the contents. So far, I've added this Funny Car Gift Pack, this JDM Skyline, this Ice Charger from Fast and Furious, uh, these two Matchbox cars that were donated generously. I get this 50 car display case car. I got this Maisto set. Um, recently, I've added the 67 Corvette Stingray from Hot Wheels, the Shelby Cobra Daytona. I just added the M257. And this week, I'm adding this 58 Corvette. And that'll all go to one subscriber when I reach 14,000. So after everything is dried, I'm going to use my Citadel paints for all my detail, marker lights, tail lights, uh, grill, you name it. I'm pretty much using Citadel because it's water-based, and when I screw up, I can fix it. <laughs> and it just really works good to get a good assortment of colors. I'm happy with it. Uh, it works for me. Uh, everybody's got their own. Model Master works great, too. Um, I just happen to like that. Also, from... Blue Mini TSI Customs. I'm also adding um, a, a nitrous bottle. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to detail. I like the gray interior. It matches. So I'm just going to highlight the, the racing um, seat belts. And I am going to do the speakers as well. Because if you're cruising around in a Monte Carlo Supersport, you should have some Jensen triaxle speakers. <laughs> uh, decals are from Kenny Terry. Um, as far as... What I decided to do is do Outlaw Speed Shop, which I have a large assortment of that I printed myself. And then at the same time, his, I think it would be like a, a co-sponsor on a race car that helps fund it and pay the bills and keep things going and so on and so forth. So here I'm just looking for the right size. Um, I'm not going to bore you with, with all that, putting decals on because it's frustrating. But that's pretty much all the pieces 
This is what I started with. This is what I ended up with. And if you'll notice, the, um, the bars on the back are also from Blue Mini TSI Customs as well. So um, I want to thank Deep Junk for putting this on. I'm going to put a link to his channel. Make sure you check it out. I'm sure he'll link all the others. Um, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.